and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers, because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt mercy, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. in following Christ, my bridegroom, in this religious community all the days of my life. Please allow me to begin simply by expressing my gratitude to this wonderful religious community for honoring me with this great, great privilege to witness not just a temporary profession, but a solemn profession in religious life. And I thank uh, Kerry and, and his parish family for welcoming us here for this wonderful, wonderful celebration today. This this is going to be an incredible couple of days here in the Archdiocese of Portland. Yesterday we had the great joy of ordaining eight men to the Holy Priesthood for our Archdiocese. And today the Church gathers to witness this profession of religious life. Truly, God is at work, the Holy Spirit is at work, and there is life in His Church. It's wonderful too, sisters, that this profession, these professions, take place within this wonderful year of consecrated life. To dedicate their entire lives to the service of God and His Holy Church. Now we're all called to that. Don't get me wrong. 
We are all called to dedicate our lives completely and totally to the Lord God, our Savior Jesus Christ, and to his holy bride, the church. But there are those among us who are called out from among us to sort of exemplify this life in a more intensive way for the benefit of all of us. And that's what's important, I think, for us to reflect on today, and because this is in the year of consecrated life. That certainly, dear sisters, this is the path upon which God has called you to holiness. The single life. But this is your path to holiness, to which God has called you. But I think it would be wrong for us to think that this is just about these two sisters and their consecration today, or even their own religious community and the consecration they make today within this community. But this is something for the whole church. This is something for all of us today. That's why I'm so thrilled to see so many of your friends and benefactors and, and prayer partners who have joined with you today for this profession. My dear sister, by watering the Holy Spirit, you have already been consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved to unite yourself more closely to Him by the new bond of religious profession? I am. In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live in chastity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to choose a life of poverty, and to offer the sacrifice of obedience. I am. May Almighty God grant you His grace to fulfill what you resolve. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. By the authority entrusted to me, I accept your vows. In the name of the Church, for the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of Sorrows, I commend you earnestly to God that you may fulfill your dedication, which is united with this Eucharistic sacrifice. O oh, Jesus, head of all the faithful and Savior of the whole mystical body, sanctify with your right hand this veil, which your servant is to wear upon her head for the love of you and your mother. Through your help, may what this veil signifies keep your servant single-minded and pure of heart, so that when she comes to the everlasting reward promised to your saints, you may lead her along with the wise virgins to the joys of the eternal wedding feast. This we ask of you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Receive this veil 
which proclaims that you belong entirely to Christ the Lord and are dedicated to the service of the church. Amen. In baptism, you have already died to sin and have been set aside for God's service. Are you now resolved to unite yourself more closely to God by the bond of perpetual profession? I am. Are you resolved with the help of God's grace to embrace the same life of perfect chastity, obedience, and poverty, which St. Francis, following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary, chose for himself and his religious family and to persevere in it forever. I am. Are you resolved to strive steadfastly for perfection in the love of God and of your neighbor by living the gospel with all your heart and keeping the rule of this religious community? I am. Are you resolved with the help of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to spend your whole life generously in the love of your sisters and in service to the people of God for the sake of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. I am. Are you resolved to serve the Lord in poverty and humility as a stranger and a pilgrim in this world, and to be subject to his church as our seraphic father was submissive, and enjoin the same upon his fathers? I am. May God, who has begun the good work in you, Bring it to fulfillment before the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, that through the intercession of the saints of the Seraphic Order and all the saints, he may, in his love, bless with his grace this our sister, whom he called to the perfect following of Christ, and with loving kindness strengthened her in her holy purpose. Let us kneel.
Father in heaven, source of all holiness, creator of the human race, your love for us was so great that you gave us a share in your own divine life. Neither the sin of Adam nor even the sins of the whole world could alter your loving purpose. In the dawn of history, you gave us Abel as an example of holiness. Later, from your beloved Hebrew people, you raised up men and women graced with every virtue. Foremost among them all stands Mary, the ever-virgin daughter of Zion. From her pure womb was born Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the Savior of the world. You sent him, Father, as our pattern of holiness. He became poor to make us rich, a slave to set us free. With love no words can tell, he redeemed the world by his pastoral history and won from you the gifts of the Spirit to sanctify his church. The voice of the Spirit has drawn countless numbers of your children to follow in the footsteps of your Son. Among these you raised your servant Francis, who professed evangelical holiness, so that, at the command of Christ crucified, he might in himself and in his followers repair the church, your dwelling, and renew it through holiness of life. Therefore, O Lord, look upon this our sister, whom in your providence you have called to follow the poor, humble Francis, the lover of the cross. Pour into her the fullness of the sevenfold spirit, so that what she has promised today with joy and gladness through your giving, she may with divine assistance observe faithfully to the end. May she be firmly established in true humility. May she be inflamed with love for Christ and a compassionate love for her sisters. May she prefer nothing to the commands of obedience. May she follow highest poverty, gird herself with the virtue of patience, and not extinguish the spirit of prayer and holy devotion. May she build up the church by the holiness of her life, advance the salvation of the world, and stand as a sign of the blessings that are to come. Lord, Holy Father, protect and guide this servant of yours. At the judgment seat of your Son, be yourself her great reward. Give her the joy of vows fulfilled. Made perfect in your love, may she rejoice in the communion of your saints and praise you forever in their company. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, Holy Father, protect and guide the servant of yours. At the judgment seat of your Son, be yourself a great reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, send forth your blessing upon this ring, so that she who wears it may keep complete faith and sincere fidelity. And as a bride of Christ, may she keep her pledge of virginity forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive this ring, for you are betrothed to the eternal King. Keep faith with your bridegroom, so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Amen. Amen.
graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And lead us not into temptation.
would say these words to you, sisters. He loved our community, he loved China, he loved life, and he wanted to share the word of God to everyone. But most importantly, he wanted his sisters to be holy. This letter was written in 1955, and as a response to our sisters who sent him a birthday card. My good and dearest daughters in St. Francis, I have received your very welcome good wishes for my name day and want to thank you so much, especially for your prayers offered to our Lord for my poor soul. My thought is constantly directed to you and to our little and devout congregation. I would like to see her not only growing in the number of members, but more than else, in the spirit of our seraphic father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. May the Holy Spirit bless all of you who have taken part in this celebration. Amen. Amen. God, who pour yourself out upon us in love and grace, we celebrate this day where these two women pour themselves out to you and for us. We pray your blessing upon this food that we shall eat in celebration of this great day in anticipation of the Feast of Heaven. And we pray together, bless us, O Lord. And these are gifts which we are about to receive from the Congratulations, Sister uh, Agnes and Sister Benedicta on your day of perfection. God bless you. Thank you for all that you've done for us and for what you do for the community and the sisters. We be blessed and we praise you and honor you and all that you do. Thank you. And we love your smiles and your joy and we just keep up your 
Congratulations, sisters! May God bless you all the days of your life. God bless you.